it's time to get into RS11. Now, if you look here, I've written RS11, but I didn't write EPP modified because I always write EPP modified if I have a modified block in the book. This block is modified, but it's not in the book. And so what happened was I had to go through, and this is a terrible, terrible picture, um, but it was a picture that I took off of my computer and then tried to print on my printer. This is what it actually works out to be. So I took a picture of what I did when my block prep happened so that I could figure out which one goes where. Because basically what they did is they took away the borders, but then they forgot to add it to the book. And so there's little spots that are of crucial importance. You've got this number seven and number six has, um, it has a flat edge on the outside, but so does 15 and 10 but 15 and 10 have a smaller bit. So there's little bits in here. I posted a video on the Dear Jane Goes EPP Facebook area explaining the sort on this. Um, but when I get back around to it on my second colorway, I will cover it on block prep again and on the sort. The bag sort was very intriguing. I had to go through and sort every block in the bag except RS11 and then go back and do RS11 and piece it together without a map. So we'll go through that in just a minute. So the bottom of my picture is cut off because I suck at printing. So this is the last number, 29. This is the very top part that would be this piece of my triangle. So this is then is this little bit right here. So it's essentially the exact same pattern it just again doesn't have this um border on the outside of it um here's your three center squares and all of this half square triangles and there is no notch on the outside bottom triangle here these are this piece right here whoops these piece right here and so i'm going to assemble this what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this together with that and so on and so forth and treat this like rows that go this way well, this this one I'm just gonna put together like that and then I'm gonna attach this so that's gonna be a bit this is gonna be a row and this is gonna be a row and then I will then attach this connect them all and have this bottom section okay so as with my other triangle I'm going to um, base these as I go because I don't want to lose track of my directionals I have a fabric that has a stripe on it apparently and um, and little berries so I'm gonna I basted these and I'm gonna sew them together I'm gonna put this one and then I'm gonna do that as I go with the next section all right so I have my little edge put together and what this piece is is these four pieces one two three and four and that's what this is right here um, then I'm going to, now I'm going to work on my next row as I knock everything off my table. And um, I'm going to work on these three, and then I'm going to attach it to this. So now that this is all assembled, I've assembled my corner, which is one, two, and three. I'm going to put this piece on to the side of this after I baste it, and then I'm going to take this whole unit and attach it to this. All right, so I got my whole middle, or the whole bottom section of piecing ready to go. So this whole bit, keep in mind this, this actual border is not actually there, but this whole section is completed right here. So this is gonna go like so. Let's turn it right side up. All right. And then this is the bottom, bottom section of it, okay? So I'm gonna connect this to there and then the one above it, the band above it, is right here. So I've got this band here, this band here, this band here. So let me get these three pieces put together, and then I get to lay out my next pieced band. Okay, so I've added my bottom band, and I started from one end, and I went to about here, 
and tied off and then I started from the other end and did all the way across and I'm going to do the same thing with this piece all right so I got all this pieced all in well together so I'm going to go back and refer to my crappy picture and I have my eight I numbered my next band my number eight piece so anything between row or piece number eight and this is 17 so piece 8 through 16 I'm gonna pull out of my pile and um, arrange here's my pile of bits and arrange in and so that I can um, do my next piece section okay so here's the bits number 8 through number 16 and this is why numbering is so important um, 10 13 and 15 look exactly the same as 12 in reality, 12 and 13 are the same, but if you look really closely at number 10, it's got this little tiny flat edge on the left, and if you look really closely at 15, you've got this little tiny flat edge on the right of 15, and that's the edge of the triangle. So that is what lines up to this point. That makes basting a little interesting. So when you baste it, you have to, I'm gonna fold this in first, on this side before I do these sides to make sure I know where this little flat bit is and it helps dial in the um, the outside angle so and then as with the last one though I'm gonna assemble this in the same way I'm gonna assemble this in one group and then this in one group so I'm gonna do this to this this to this add this to these two and then add this to make this unit and add this to this add this to this, and then this to this unit, and then join the units to then form my middle section here, which is a lot easier seen here. So this is what I'm doing right here. Got these two bits done. I got this, which is this bit. Oops. Which is that bit right there, and then this is the bit next to it so I'm going to connect those two and then I'm going to put the bar that goes on top of it I'm going to connect them so I'm going to put this piece connected to this piece whoops at the points of the square here-ish and then this will be on top and then this will connect to the rest of my triangle. Okay, so I taped this. I haven't stitched. I haven't stitched this yet, but I wanted to show you um, on the edges. The edges have that one bit that folds over on the the one flat bit, which is this part right here. And the reason it doesn't line up quite well on this one is because when I folded this on this triangle, when I folded this one because this is so little, it ended up being a little higher. So I had to feel around for the paper. Once I attach my solid triangle, I can smooth this out. Um, I did a little better here, but not much. So it's fine as long as you get it close. But I just wanted to point that out, that this does not go to the edge. This is where that flat bit is, and that's exactly what's supposed to happen. On the book, these go to the these go to a point but when they took this border out um, to make it English paper piecing they did this kind of a thing with the math how the math worked out so um, that's why that that's got to be that way so the bottom one this one matches up this one has a tiny flat spot this one has a flat spot that's a little bigger when I go to piece that together Okay, so I've got all of this pieced into one giant piece, and I just have the top portion to do. So again, this is not on there. This has been eliminated, and so we're just going to do this tip part of it, which I've laid out here. So if you see, I've got this, my number six has this bigger flat side, and my number seven also has that. So I will base this in first, and then I will do this side so that I can make sure that I get this angle as accurate as possible and then I will pick 
this piece to this piece and then put it on that and then I will add these and then I will take this unit and connect it to this unit and connect it to this unit thus finishing my top and then once that's done I will finish by putting it on the top of my triangle. Okay so I got my tip assembled so this is this row here let me put this over here so you got this bit with these two triangles and you have the flat bits on either side above that point and then the band and then the tip so all I got to do now is connect this to that and I will have my completed RS11 triangle Now after I've connected the bits, I now have my completed RS11 triangle.